One day you will understand there is much more to this world than Catholic Church told you to control you. We just had our Monday pump. Let's figure out, are we going to flush after it? Are we going down? What is happening with meme coins? What are the sectors that are actually pumping at this stage? We will also go through Andrew Tate situation. Will he burn $10 million more? And will this be $10 million more of token, of his daddy token, right? We will actually hear what crash has to say on this matter as well. And we would also cover yesterday's situation with crypto banter and launching their baked token. Without further ado, let's start. Let's actually start with the market sentiment. Bitcoin here and grid index is 53. I won't say this is very bullish, to be honest, at this stage, because this sentiment changed too quickly. This is not something that manipulator essentially wants. Therefore, there might be some tips in the change of this sentiment. It pretty much just in one day, it's switched from 30 back to 53. There might be some tips into a further flush, right? Full fucking cent. This is the sentiment that we see from several members on X on Twitter, which is very, very important to analyze and to see as well. Sensei, I would actually be showing several tweets of his. Market is about to explode. He pretty much sent it yesterday in the middle of the day, where I was showing a bunch of bear sentiment from a bunch of people on X as well. End of the bear trap. Be ready again by Sensei. Everything start tomorrow. Bull run, all season, a 3 ETF launch. Be ready. The things that I shared to you yesterday, right? It's honestly quite interesting to see this type of marking reading from a person on Twitter, right? We would be seeing what will be happening. He got a bunch of views on that, so he's definitely someone whose opinion is getting appreciated at this stage. Holy shit, Bitcoin just reclaimed $63,500. The bottom is in, full cent. This is something to analyze the sentiment. It's also, it's very, very important because market is pretty much just psychology. If you're just concentrating the sentiment all the time, you'll be making money here. One thing from Plasma I was talking to you a lot about as well. We are in a global liquidity cycle. Bitcoin halving is pretty much just timed perfectly with the Bitcoin liquidity cycle. That's why the top for BTC is usually around 1.5 years after the halving happened. Crypto moves with global liquidity. We are in for an epic pepper market as new people join crypto and buy the number one meme. We are right here, if you can see it at the start of the increase of the global liquidity and at the top, like the more we move further, the more people would eventually start to invest into the risk assets. This is actually bullish. This is something that you want to see happen in the market. And that's why I'm saying that buy, buy everything, just buy in several months from now, you would never see these type of prices as you see currently. Risk assets pretty much right now, they are artificially getting suppressed currently because Larger players, manipulator, whales, institutions are buying into them and they're creating this sentiment that this is risky, this is actually degenerate and we all have to understand that the only reason why they are creating this sentiment is because they want to have a bit more time to accumulate and we are in the accumulation zone for 2.5 years plus already. We are very, very close to break out of the accumulation phase and speaking of alts that might take couple months from here. That's definitely right. But it's a very, very short amount of time. And interesting thing is that people won't understand that we broke out until it will be too late. This is the mistake that a lot of first cycle and second cycle participants in the market are doing as well. You are not believing that we broke out and you let the price convince you. But once that happened, you already underperformed heavily. And I think this is already something that happened as well. Because I told you that the reversal happened like two weeks ago, 1.5 weeks ago, and you could have accumulated through all this time. And even right now, we saw like this first pump. And a lot of people would continue saying that, oh, we're probably seeing flush down, probably nothing is happening. So they will essentially continue to operate in the sentiment created by the manipulator to make sure that there would be as much random players making sure that there would be as low random players as only possible in this rocket that they are going to launch. This is so important to understand and we will be going higher to certain levels and some people will be selling because they're just too hurt. They were sitting in the assets for years 
they just to hurt and they will be selling and break even and after that after some time after some time the asset will probably show some downwards action price action so they would think oh i probably did the right thing right but unfortunately right after it will be just surging up and make these people regret i haven't been this confident ever we are going to be so much higher by christmas please lock the fuck in gm i do actually agree with that by christmas very high chance the Bitcoin consolidation looks extremely bullish and healthy to me. The more we consolidate, the higher we will push because people who wanted to sell, they are selling into this consolidation. It hurts, it's scary, they don't know what will happen next. Altcoins are just getting destroyed through this consolidation and other people are entering, smart money are entering. People who were just waiting or maybe they missed the first pump, right? So they are entering. They are rebuying the positions of the current people. And the main evidence of that is that the chart essentially stays at the same levels, right? And they will have worse entry points. They will eventually be holding more time. In order for them to do a 2x on Bitcoin, they need to hold till $120,000. There were people who were buying BTC last year. There were people who were buying BTC last year at $16,000. Most of them, I would say a lot of them, they actually probably sold into this consolidation. They've made their 3 4 x They are scared that this asset can actually go down. So they are performing this type of operation. They are selling into this consolidation. This is a pure work of the market maker and manipulator on the market as well. To make sure that older hands, they are out of the asset before you push further. With new investors, new hands, new investors will eventually hold the asset. And some of them, if they won't be making a lot of profits, they will be even holding once the asset will reverse back and go down is example someone enters btc at sixteen thousand dollars right now he has three to four x we are at 120k he has six to eight x it's fine for him he's taking his profits someone else is entering btc currently at sixty thousand dollars he's holding 120k it's just a two x pretty much here's people around him talking about oh i made a 5x i made a 6x i made a 7x so he continue holding eventually becoming exit liquidity of the people who were early constantly feeling man like i just did not make enough profit like these guys they made way more profits i probably should just hold more we're probably going higher whilst first guys are eventually dumping whilst first guys are essentially dumping on this guy this is what is happening on the market. Are you ready, folks? Altism. This is a very important chart. This is the chart of Bitcoin dominance. So we see that currently we had a historical line of resistance for Bitcoin dominance, which means that around these levels, what people were doing in 2021, what were they doing in 2017, they massively started to sell their Bitcoin and repositioning to altcoins, leading to the fact that Bitcoin dominance was going down, which means that the smaller amount of funds in the market was stored in BTC, and leading to the fact that altcoins were heavily appreciated in price, in value, as people were putting more funds and more money into altcoins. We are at these historical levels currently, at this stage. We would see what will be happening moving further. We are definitely sour at a very, very interesting period and stage at this stage and for this market we have this main narrative main thing that dominance should be going down like a higher percent that's just pure psychology based on greed in the first place people who made some money with btc they're watching us making money in memes they're watching some alts pumping they would eventually want to join as well and we had a very very interesting and pivotal moment we would be seeing what will be happening with it i do have a feeling that short term memes should pump a bit more out perform and then we would essentially see moving further money supply up means bitcoin up crypto up assets up as well money supply up people eventually are looking for the assets to put their money into so they won't be losing the purchasing power right this is a very very important take gentle reminder attention is more than fundamentals so why devs work on the fundamentals to get your attention memes equal attention i think interesting lessons were essentially learned by people who were marketing projects in the last cycle who were working as market makers or marketing co-founders is that a lot of the marketing unfortunately dependent on developers delivering something even with some of the projects this cycle these development milestones 
they were becoming blockers at the certain stage of the process. Like we are waiting for the Android app to start with the marketing campaign. And there are some issues with the development, with the Android application. Android application never comes, right? And all your marketing operations eventually go to shit. You can have teams set up. You can have certain conditions discussed with influencers, with different channels already. And everything goes to shit just because of the fact that engineers did not deliver something on time. And we have a very, very interesting situation with meme coins because of it. Because memes don't have utility. This is pure marketing, which is a very, very interesting situation for people who just want to excel at marketing. They want they don't want to do something with with developers. It's it's kind of already quite hard by itself because it's not only marketing, it's market making as well, which is a whole different type of niche to understand, all right? So we just have right now marketers along with market makers working on these meme coins. And they are a very, very nice vehicles of attention because best attention, best utility is number go up. In meme coins, they have a bunch of this utility, 100%. The Ethereum ETF is not priced in, not remotely. 69% chance Ethereum is 6K by August. 69% chance is obviously a meme. We will be seeing what will be happening. But it's a very interesting situation that I do tend to agree with that as well, that Ethereum ETF is not priced in. I do think that... Some people, they're not very, very bullish on the fact that it was approved because I was essentially the only person who predicted that Ethereum ETF will get approved. And on top of it, some people I expect like lower inflows. Some people expect that Ethereum is not that well marketed in comparison to BTC. Well, I know people who are working on Wall Street and they specifically have a Ethereum focused fund. It's not about BTC. It's pretty much about Ethereum in the first place. Right. So there is definitely certain level of knowledge that education and education that that was happening through all these years. We do have a bunch of Ethereum whales as well that definitely were educating people around them on the technology and on the things that were happening. But we had a violent repricing with BTC. I think at the time where we first got to know about BTC TF, it was like around twenty five thousand dollars. And it led us like inflows and all this sentiment, all this narrative about inflows actually led us to 71, 72K, right? And at the same time, we have to understand that Bitcoin by itself is way larger market cap asset than Ethereum. It's way easier to push Ethereum with the same type of inflows. Obviously, BTC was marketed way better as well. So we, we kind of have this equalizer then that the market cap of Ethereum is lower at the same time BTC was probably marketed way better to retail to kind of this retail with money like all the guys boomers who are really using ETFs because general like 30 40 years old people they probably figured out the way to buy some Ethereum and BTC even without ETF in the first place that's essentially for what all the people statistically would have more capital because they just spend more time on this earth right one thing I can say for sure is that price action on Ethereum seems suppressed through holy cycle. Like definitely it was not the one who was like outperforming heavily. And I think even to this day, uh, BTC outperformed Ethereum if you'd count from the lows, from the lows of uh, 2022 and 2023, right? Interesting situation might be happening with Ethereum and inflows because definitely market market is a bit scared currently. People are looking more into like bad inflows and sentiment is not that bad. We have layer twos that are diluting the price. Who needs to, to use Ethereum and things like that? Very, very interesting. And chart of Ethereum looks primed as well. It looks very good at this stage. So, so many, many months of consolidation. Very, low, very nice. Psychology is your friend. If you know the trend, what is not your friend are emotions. Count them. You don't need them in finance. It will lead you to misery. Instead, learn to trade, study market psychology and read books about it. It will help you by a great margin. It's a very interesting take because there are a bunch of books on psychology of the market, even like 150 years ago. And if you would check them out, it's interesting that obviously human psychology does not change over time. Technology might change and we probably have a bunch more like essentially AI trading boards, market makers and a bunch of boards that are in the market as well. But most of the liquidity is still directed 
by human emotions, by humans in the first place. And until this will get replaced with AI, psychology will play a very, very important role. That's why it's kind of funny to hear when people are saying like this time is different and things like that. How human psychology did not change in hundreds or thousands of years because it's essentially an evolutionary process. Some people who are saying that this time is different are assuming that human psychology changed in the last four years from the time the last cycle ended. As you can understand, it did not happen. Therefore, skills in the market are actually quite important because it's almost like you acquire them once and then you can use them for the rest of your life. You can just make money with the markets for the rest of your life if you just acquired these skills once. Obviously, they might get invalidated with the implementation and integration of AI. At this stage, we have to understand that AI probably won't get introduced into the whole picture. Like people won't get replaced because markets are an instrument by the elites to make retail poor, to pretty much take money out of people, make them less free. So, so they actually need to work more. Market essentially is a way to suck out life savings of retail, of middle class and, and people like that. This is the only utility of the markets at this stage. And elites who are constantly in the markets, they're obviously better at playing this game. But in order to suck out money from middle class and from retail, you need to show this shiny picture. You need to show a guy who made like multi-million dollars with meme coins or with altcoins or made on this market. So thousands of people, hundreds of thousands of people would essentially join and lose the money as well. Because this guy would be telling that I made a 50x. And someone who just made 2, 3, 4x, he would be sitting there and thinking, wow, like the guy made 50x. I want to make 50x as well. We are definitely going higher. Whilst the same guy would essentially just be dumping on them. And some thoughts on the state of X, on the state of Twitter at this stage, because I definitely tend to see way lower quality conversations happening on X on Twitter recently. I think the main reason for that is because a bunch of people are bored, a bunch of people are not in the marketplace. This is exactly the time where you have to be in the marketplace. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, for all transparency, I'm beginning to think all your shoe influencers should just dox PLs total earnings. There is way more people I thought here that were good that are shit and people that are underrated here. It's a very interesting situation because you probably see a bunch of posts like I just made millions with meme coins. All they do, they essentially just engagement farming. And you can find comments like share wallet address. The same guy that was saying like I, I, I shorted seven figures of bread at the uh, peak fat and people were just saying like share a screenshot. Why are you not sharing that? This is a very, very important thing as well that a lot of people are essentially trying to create certain reality so they can sell shit or push some shit into or pretty much just just grow their accounts i have more meme coins than the value of my 401k pretty interesting i'm not from the us but essentially i definitely have a similar type of situation and one of the ideas for these videos is because i started to think we have meme coins in meme coins we have crypto bros influencers, good teams, like some of them, like larger memes that are actually being run as businesses. Pepe is probably like a bunch of ETH whales, like a cattle that just decided to overtake. But like people behind Pepe, probably like these are whales that you would never find like on X, anywhere. Like they're probably very, very anonymous. A bunch of teams right after essentially started to get better, to launch a bunch of projects and they became quite successful with some of the projects. So memes are essentially being run in businesses currently as businesses. The issue that I see is that most of meme teams like tops, they have tens of millions of dollars. And we have to understand what is their competition in the marketplace. Their competition are funds that invested hundreds of millions of dollars into the altcoins. And you kind of start thinking what will actually outperform because I, I was telling you that like these hundreds of millions of dollars they will be spent into marketing and I just came to a re realization no they won't they will spend to pump up the chart because the best marketing is the price going up is the best utility for a coin is that price just goes up. This is where all these hundreds of millions of dollars will actually be spent. I do believe that the only thing that only stated that I think we still have here is that it would be better for them to pump these things 
when eventually BTC and Ethereum will be at all-time highs. And I do think it actually might be happening quite soon, because they want the things to be a bit more effective. At the same time, today, we already saw movements from things like Zeki Sync and Layer Zero. Some of them, like, they, they, they showed around 50% movement in one day. Which definitely, like, because these projects, they're heavily manipulated by VCs. And these things, they're specifically getting launched closer to the end of the cycle. And these things, they're specifically getting launched closer to the end of the accumulation period. They don't have, like, any time to accumulate more tokens. And they probably don't need because they have enough tokens to just pump these things straight up. This is the competition that I see for memes at this stage. However, what we do have to understand is that we'll probably still have some time. Because these manipulators and these funds, they will not have enough money to take profits, to take liquidity on based on the funds of the current market participants. They definitely need retail. They definitely need additional large injections of capital to take profits on the hundreds of millions. And on top of that, essentially make some profit as well, because they don't only want to take initials out. They probably, they obviously want to take some profits as well. So from that point of view, I do think that memes are actually quite safe. They are quite protected by the market structure because we will still have this time once we would be going back to the BTC all-time high and Ethereum all-time high, means memes will be surging up for all this time because current market participants, they just want to buy memes. And large memes, they just want to loan them, right? And once we are there, once the alt season will essentially start, I do believe that memes will eventually uh, reach escape velocity large memes and they will just go and retail will eventually just be buying them as well and lower memes smaller market cap memes they will just stay as these procedures as these tools essentially for people to actually make a lot of money from a very very small amount of money right because most of the ads that you have on the marketplace currently you probably won't make a lot of money with them from a small amount of money right just because of the way they're set up because of the market caps because of the uh, high fdv and low flow meta that vcs essentially have currently and unfortunately most people who would be trying to make a lot of money with a small amount of money from memes they will be losing their funds not understanding how the game is set up in the first place probably just giving it all away to shit influencers on solana uh, shilling some calls with them right my biggest prediction for this cycle is no one knows what the fuck they're talking about last cycle no one could have predicted fucking covid and interest rate cuts you can study charts all you want they don't include shit like sb stealing customer funds i want to agree with that 100 percent because a lot of the times technically when we look at the charts we can see that uh, essentially the chart is looking towards a certain direction, right? And as mentioned, I'm working with people that predicted Russia-Ukraine war based on the BTC chart in the first place, right? And there are a bunch of things like this that might be happening. And this person, he's talking about events. He's explaining charts with events, which is wrong in the first place. A manipulator does not give a fine fuck about events. First, things that they need to draw on the chart are to pretty much rob the largest amount of people possible, right? And then they come up with some events, with some news, with some bullshit that does not make sense in the first place. They just come up with things to explain, to retail to these market participants that believe in events that, oh yeah, yeah, this happened because of this. And that's why uh, I won't actually sue this person because market dumped and liquidate all of my uh, life savings, life savings because of this random event. This is something that happened. This is like a very, very smart machine on essentially taking money, taking life savings from people, keeping them slaves, making sure that they will essentially continue to be slaves. And it has a very, very nice explanation. It's your responsibility. You decided to buy, that's up to you. We were telling you, don't do leverage trading, right? And the things that they're drawing on the chart, this is just everything to fuck with psychology, following all these stages, essentially accumulation, pump, liquid decreation, capitulation. Accumulation, pump, liquidity, creation, capitulation. And all these things, they're drawing in the way to make sure that the smallest amount of people possible will actually be able to enter the rocket at the start and exit at the tops. That's why most performing people, best performing people are actually dead people. And that's why I'm always telling you, just die, just be dead. 
most of your assets, if they will survive, they will greatly appreciate in price. But if you would be active, if you would be searching, if you would be looking, if you would be constantly updated with like different station, they will fuck with your emotions, which will eventually lead you to either selling, which is worst case scenario, or heavily trimming your back which happens with most of us. Oh, probably bad event is happening. I will actually sell. Bam, next day, you already, the price already 20% large and your bank just trimmed by 20%. Have a feeling we get a totally disgusting on-chain runner soon. That's pretty much about meme in the first place because most on-chain runners are actually memes. We, we would see, <laughs> it's funny that his name is Andy, right? So we, we would see what this on-chain runner would actually be, right? And the video that I actually found very, very funny because it essentially explains these market stages that I just mentioned to you. I want us to look at this video as well. We all have to understand these things. We have to understand how manipulator works and how they actually make money on this market. And you have to understand that time is definitely something that is on their end. They don't need to pay the rent. They don't need to spend some money on expenses. They have a bunch of it. They need to take hundreds of millions of dollars in profits on hundreds of millions of dollars invested. If you're like new to this whole thing, just be very careful with that. People are going to manipulate you and you're going to yeah. believe them because, because you're in euphoria. Yeah, you bought Bitcoin at 100,000. You believe it's going to a million because look at the technology, honey. Look at it. <laughs> This is real deal. All those relationship turmoils over our finances. Yeah, it's finished. We did it. I knew you wouldn't regret marrying me. Your mother was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like 129,000. It's like, look, honey, I told you. And then straight dumping. It's like 80 grand. Oh, no. Next week. It's like, no, honey, he's going to come back. It's like, you see, we're yeah. back to 99,000 and then 70 grand. No, and dude. And then 40 grand. Oh, my God. At this point, <laughs> you're trying your best to never bring up the conversation. Everything's fine. This is a good tech. Yeah. Like I said, it was still good tech now now it's like 35,000 okay now i have to sell this because she's leaving with the kids and then it's like 15 grand this is actually like very traumatic <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> to like go through that dude because that actually happens this one's so crazy this is just crazy like how well this explains and how many families actually how many people and please note that there is a reason this experience needs to be so traumatic for people the main reason for that is to make sure that next time they will come, they will only come at the tops. That's why this experience needs to be as traumatic as possible. So they won't essentially come back sooner, right? It's not like me. I lost $200,000 last cycle, all of my money at that stage, right? Good money that I earned through running business and essentially providing value to people, to businesses, to companies. And I re-entered like several months after, maybe because I am a degenerate or a psycho, right? But for most people, this would be such a traumatic experience. They will just not touch it. They will call it scam. They will never come back. And they will only come back when the opportunity is actually lucrative enough. And opportunity is lucrative enough when you already get convinced by price, when there is no fucking upside left in this thing. This whole thing is set up in a way just to like ideally fuck with your emotions. These guys, they're just masters of psyop and they just rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. And this is essentially the part of how the world works because it's definitely not beneficial to them to have like a bunch of rich people, right? They need to constantly take money out of middle class of retail to make sure that they will continue slave their lives on their jobs, losing the life savings. This is something that just need to happen. And on top of it, you're doing that. First, you're getting control. And secondly, you're making money. This is just so smart procedure to have. And what we have currently is that with all these ETF, with all these institutions, they essentially saw that, all right, in this sector, we can repeat the same thing. We can continue doing that. Let's stop this holiday. Let's stop this celebration for these default guys, like out of the market. We will put a bunch of them in jail. We will tell that they essentially fucked with our legislations, with the laws and things like that, because we don't want them to make money. We will put a bunch of regulations on. We will make sure that they won't be able to get the money out of crypto or they will just pay crazy taxes. And we will take this industry and add into our stock market thing 
where we are rinse and repeating people, making everyone poor all the time by showing some people who obviously were able to, to make money, right? What do you think is happening with NVIDIA? There are a bunch of news like 70% of NVIDIA employees are millionaires and things like that. Why this is happening? 70% of NVIDIA employees is a very, very small number of people. But the number of people that are listening to this PSYOP is millions. What is happening is that they're making sure that these millions are buying into NVIDIA currently so they can dump on them, taking away their life savings. So you made a small portion rich, right? And you lure larger portion, making them poor, making them slave away. And they will even slave away better because they will think, oh, these guys, they were actually able to hard work their way into millions of dollars. And that's why I just lost it all. But that's why I actually need to work harder. I need to work. This is just so fucking smartly created PSYOP in the first place. This is pretty much how this world works. BitGet spot daily top gainers. We see Boba here. And by the way, uh, listing on BitGet costs about $600,000. It's definitely an interesting case that Boba is on BitGet. Coming back to our Andy on Blast situation. Just, just briefly, right? Andy on Blast, strong support, weak resistance. In the yellow clips, you can see how often it broke through resistance. The more often a chart breaks through resistance, the more likely it is to break it in future and become the new support. Simply explain so much higher. So we definitely can see that right now we created this level of support that is very, very strong at this stage. We bounce from it like one, two, three times already. And we have the resistance that we broke through many times. One, two, three, four upwards and a couple times downwards as well. And here we can definitely see that this resistance and here we can definitely see that we, we get rejected from breaking this resistance, right? So what we see is definitely quite bullish pattern overall. We are in the range currently. You can see this giant range. And with the further reversal of the market, with the further injection of liquidity, we should pretty much just be trading to the top of the range exactly as Bitcoin currently, right? And be breaking out from the range with additional liquidity coming into the ecosystem, into a meme, and with the exposure in terms of Blast token as well. We also had a nice 50% movement from yesterday on this market re reversal. Right now we are correcting back and this is so bullish actually because this is exactly what market maker needs to do in the first place. He needs to make sure that all the JITs, all the people who are hurt, they will be out. And we are forming a stronger level as well because some people are selling here and some people are buying back as well. So we are forming a nice liquidity level that might serve as a support level in the future as well. It's always great to, do, to be forming these type of levels on the chart. Default work by the market maker. We pumped and then people are seeing that BTC is trending down a bit, Ethereum is trending down a bit and holders who are scared, they are exiting the asset or they are selling part of the asset as well, making sure that the average entry price for the asset is higher, is larger, making sure that the least amount of people that are in profits already are actually in this rocket, making sure that the average point of entry into this asset is quite high so we can pump higher in a more better way. Remember the King Blast, two airdrops that everyone hated and fought it into oblivion. Turns out they both look primed to provide two of the most hated rel relics in history. I'm all for it. So charts actually look quite similar with all both uh, ZK Sync and Blast. And as mentioned, we are at a very, very interesting point of time because these launches, like they are happening at the end of the accumulation period for a reason, right? Because launches that are happening in the bear markets, they're usually providing like a large amount of people for the manipulator, for the owners of the project, usually to scoop up the supply of the token for cheap so they can pump them. Something that we saw is Celestia back in October and uh, winter time as well. And with these projects, probably, and with these projects, probably the manipulator did not have enough time to actually scoop out the supply. Therefore, the assumption that we are making is that they have enough of supply already right away. And we see that circulation supply for both Blast and Ziki Sync is quite low at this stage. So they can definitely just pump the whole thing up like 100% and do it quite easily. And 
it's always nice to get like these random tourists out of these projects before that as well. That's why we are currently seeing a sell off. People are selling. They need money. They're desperate. The market is going down. It's worthless. And drop was shit. This is what I fucking love to hear. Speaking of Andrew Tate, yesterday he published feeling wild. I want to burn $10 million of cash. Money is burned. So I'm not sure that he's speaking about $10 million in one of the tokens that he actually have like daddy, or is it just like $10 million of cash? But we definitely had cases where he was doing that before or already. And right now we kind of see that there is a large and larger connection between uh, the real world, which is main business of Tate, right? The, the university and uh, the data token as well. He's probably providing some insight there in terms of the token. And he is also was sharing something that if you're holding daddy and you're not uh, in the uh, real world, you will not make it because probably like they, they are receiving certain information that helps them to either hold or probably even like take profits at certain levels. For the past few days, Bitcoin has shown strength and stopped dumping. This is setting up the market conditions that Tate was waiting for before continuing his plan for daddy. You all had time to stack up your bags, get ready for Daddy Part 2. It's quite interesting. I think that Daddy might actually become one of the few, if not even one, influencer token that will actually succeed in this market. And that's mainly because Tate is not a tourist for the crypto industry. That's mainly because he pretty much made $80 million at least in the last cycle from crypto, right? This is something that he was sharing himself. He is probably like more degen, more like in the trenches then a bunch of people like watching this video and being active in the market and thinking on, on, on themselves as essentially someone who, that understand uh, the market. And yesterday on Crypto Banter show, Crash was asked by Ren uh, about this situation as well. And it's very, very interesting to hear what Crash essentially responded about Daddy and Tate. Once again, do any of those have a chance to make it into the top 10 meme coins? Top 20? Not really. Maybe Daddy by Tate? Maybe. Uh, depending on how serious he's taken, you know, doing that. It's quite interesting to see that Crash tends to think that maybe only like Tate would be able to push his daddy token to billions. There are some things that a lot of people around Brett and around base, they're essentially connected uh, to Tate. I won't be sharing them, right? It's very, very interesting because as mentioned, meme coins, they are being ran by businesses currently. And Tate is definitely someone who can set up businesses, who can set up teams, can actually make people work as well. So this is something very, very interesting that uh, might be happening with this token. And it also would be quite a nice scenario for people in the real world, right? Because at the peak retail mania, they would be able to share not only that, like I made, like I'm making 10 K months because I started this agency from the real world. They would be able to share, like I made a hundred X on Daddy, which is a token of Tate in the real world because I was with Tate. I invested, I believed, I made money in crypto, right? And you would be seeing a bunch of TikToks, bunch of ads of people essentially saying that this is the best type of utility. This is the best type of marketing. As mentioned several times of this video, best utility is the number goes up, right? And in this case, they would be able to just make the number goes up. They definitely have the resources. They definitely have the knowledge. They definitely have people. It's a very, very interesting setup in terms of the situation that we have with Daddy at this stage. And there is a business, business outcome, business sense for these things to actually happen. Uh, I actually became quite more bullish on Daddy when I was essentially explaining these things. Let's see, I, I would probably not be entering um, myself at this stage, but it's just a very, very interesting setup that might be happening for this token. Last but not least, yesterday by Crypto Banter, uh, there was a launch of token called Baked, and there was a bunch of FUD because um, we just saw screenshots right away that someone uh, bought $9,000 worth of it only, pretty much sniped using Sniper software, and he was able to sell um, $3 million worth of it, right? And people are bashing, people are fighting and things like that. My thought process here is any token would essentially get sniped. Like if it's like from larger account, like larger like celebrity or something, they're getting sniped. One of the th interesting thoughts that was shared in the Crypto Banter show by one of the guys is that if the person was able to snipe this token, 10k worth of it, 
he probably was sniping a bunch of scam bake tokens that were launched on the market as well. So maybe he actually spent like 400k instead of 10k and he got like 3 million out of 400k, right? But it's already a different picture right away. Partially, I think the fight is happening is because yesterday people are still like they were very, very hurt from the market, from the portfolio going down and they just found a way to channel the negative energy. But this is just a pussy fucking behavior channel negative energy this is just like it does not help in the first place you need to use this evil energy for your benefit and when you're just channeling like calling something out that definitely does not help you speaking of crypto banter and the launch maybe it was it was like there was a chance to do it in a better way what better way Crash suggested things like whitelists and blacklists that happened on Brett and on, and on Pepe as well. But man, the community, like they would be fudded, they will get fudded like way more. Uh, because, but at the same time, probably people would receive if something like this, like if whitelists would happen and 80% of supply was sniped like early on by the dev, right? People would probably get the main utility of the meme coin, which would be a number go up right we also have to understand that crypto banter community is a bit retailish although they're definitely changing some things with a bunch of nice traders that they have on the channel and they are also launching a meme coin on solana which is like gts chain out there right so it's kind of like this effect squared but how i'm looking at these things i'm looking from the business point of view as well is there a way to invest into crypto banter at this stage there is no way right and do you think that with more retail coming into the market, channels like this, they will essentially attract more and more retail? This is almost something like maybe like investing into Alex Burke and his channel. But if you want to expect, if you want to invest into Alex Burke and his channel, you just invest in gaming tokens. Gaming tokens are essentially proxy proxies to invest into Alex Burke and his channel because he would be shuffling these gaming tokens down the throat of retail right and interesting thing that we see with pretty much the same thing with baked and and some other tokens if it won't have a drop pressure and they will essentially keep continue mentioning talking about it with more and more retail probably there will be more and more people entering this token eventually right so there might be an opportunity right there this is like an investment into this business uh, doing well um, further into the cycle I do think that they have essentially a high chance of continue doing well. Again, I'm not buying myself. I'm just sharing my thoughts right here. And I, I did not understand the FUD much. I think mainly it happened because people are hurt, they're emotional, things are going down. And partially because Ren showed it that he cared himself. Like he, he was a bit emotional himself on the video. So uh, he, he definitely showed that he, he cared. And I think that people saw that as, as a weakness as well. But we would see what will be happening with this part as well. I just wanted to share a couple of thoughts from my end. And main things, my main lessons is that I don't think you should direct negative energy. That's just like useless. And when you are directing negative energy, you are essentially giving it away. This is very, very important as well. And the lesson is with these type of launches as well. Because if you had the notifications on, even without like sniper software, you probably were able to make some money. And even on the long term, you should like, we all should see any type of FUD, any type of like bad sentiment happening as an opportunity. Because when the FUD is happening, assets are oversold because people are very, very emotional about the money and about the things that are happening. So if the FUD is happening, we should understand whether or not this thing would actually be able to survive into the future and whether or not uh, due to the fact that it's actually oversold there might be an opportunity right there this is just my two cents on the situation finalizing the whole thing zero indie tokens sold bullish as fuck on blast on indie blast is the most undervalued layer 2 ethereum layer 2 at this stage we should be getting ethereum season and blast should greatly get appreciated in price as well as indie and we should not compare market cap of indie to the market cap of blast we should compare to the data points that we have around the chain transactions apps and we have them larger and better than on base currently at this stage so i do believe that violent repricing should be happening for ending in comparison to what essentially bread would be able or was able to achieve 
at this stage. And closing thoughts on the market. Yesterday, I said on my video that we will probably be getting a flush down, like additional one, right? And man, I just saw too many people agreeing with me. Like my, my counter trading bond was just not all right. About like too many people agreeing with me like, yeah, yeah, we'll probably get another flash down. So probably we should probably hold. That's not what I like to hear at all. And I was mentioning in, in the videos like last week and a couple of weeks before as well, that once the reversal will happen, most people will not even understand that the reversal is happening. And they will eventually wait until the price will convince them, which is a key to underperformance. So we would see what type of effect this reversal will have on the market. However, a lot of people are still scared. A lot of people are still not watching after the market. A lot of people are bored. They're doing something else. And this is actually a very, very bullish sign for the fact of not giving additional flash downs. Just the price grows steadily, steadily, steadily. And most people are mid curving like, yeah, probably it will go down. We will see a correction and then it pumps right away. And they're capitulating into the pump heavily underperforming on their positions. That's why I'm telling you, we're still at a very, very nice spot. Accumulate, don't be greedy. Don't risk, don't try to save 20% downside, 30% downside, risking hundreds, if not thousands of percent of upside. It's crucially important where you enter the asset, crucially important. Because once the assets start multiplying, if someone entered 2x lower than you, he would be getting 2x more excess multipliers. You, you got a 5x, he got a 10x already. And, and, and if he is on leverage, man, you're way behind. Thank you very much for watching this video. I will be seeing you tomorrow. Bye-bye.